life and the reality of situations, but I guess that's you know, Brian Murphy wanted to press a lot of those guys. going on dudes and dudettes so I guess the light isn't really working so I have to hold it up so two beats Eastern Michigan by quite a few points yesterday really cool a lot of dunks see those you just saw those right now it's pretty crazy then also we had USC beating Stetson another school I don't really know that much of but they beat them by over 30 as well so that's good to see at least they're not playing down to their competition then also you got to see a little picture there now they're uh, speculating more that LeBron James Jr. will probably go to Duke because he's wearing a Duke sweatshirt at the moment but pretty sure just because they're like the most talked about team right now that's pretty much why he's sporting that and also leading to LeBron James he did pass Wilt Chamberlain on I believe he's now number five on the all-time scoring list and the Lakers did get another win so right now they should be eight and six on the season so definitely on a pretty nice few game win streak here, I believe four in a row. Good to see, hopefully they can continue and get a lot better both offensively and defensively. But with some more uh, injury news for the Lakers, uh, Rajon Rondo will miss about three to five weeks because he did just have surgery on a broken hand. Hopefully it's just that long. It's really not that long of a time for a broken hand, but and for him, he doesn't really need to worry about shooting, but <clears throat> at least this way will give other guys like Lonzo and some other people some more playing time at that point guard position. Finally, at least some good positive news for the LA Chargers on their injury front with Joey Bosa, their young spectacular defensive end, is finally practicing this week and he has all the intentions to play this Sunday against Denver, but pretty sure they're not going to rush anything. They're just going to see how it feels after a full week of practice. Pretty sure he's limited, but still he looks ready to go. Hopefully he can, whether it's this week or next week. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. 
They also the Chargers also did sign a linebacker and Trevion Johnson while putting Denzel Perryman officially on the injured reserve list and they added another linebacker to the practice squad just in case something happens. They've been going through linebackers like crazy this year. And then also one of their games, uh, I believe in December, early December against the Pittsburgh Steelers was moved from like a one o'clock game to the Sunday night game. And surprisingly, it's gonna be the first game that the Chargers have uh, in prime time, which is pretty crazy because they are one of the top teams, top five team in the NFL right now. And of course, they just rid them off at the beginning of the year and not giving them an opportunity to show their talents and especially play in front of the whole nation. But luckily they got that opportunity next month and hopefully they can get a W against a pretty good team in Pittsburgh and of course the ex-USC guy Juju Smith-Schuster as their wide receiver. Of course, more news about USC head coach Clay Helton's job security. Everybody's writing that probably still shouldn't be coached, but he did come out earlier this week saying that he plans to only coach for another 15 years, and he's hoping to do that with USC. So he plans on staying at USC for 15 years. Obviously, I wouldn't mind it. He just needs to make more changes with his offensive and defensive, or not really defensive coordinator, but definitely offensive coordinator, but certain other type of position coaches as well he needs to do some getting rid of to be able to trust him a bit more because, you know, some of these guys are great recruiters, but as far as teaching and understanding the game fully, I don't think they're quite 100% ready to play in the Pac-12 where USC was always dominant and now they aren't, but a lot of players are supporting Coach Helton and even the athletic director, Lynn Swan, is still you know, backing him up, supporting him. But we'll see how this goes. Like I have mentioned in the past few videos, that as long as he ends at 500, he should still stay safe for one more year. But if he ends up going under 500 and especially losing to UCLA and Notre Dame the next two weeks, then... He might get the can and hopefully we get one of those few guys I mentioned a few videos back as well. Uh, definitely any one of those would be good, but I'm pretty sure those guys will be highly regarded, whether it's other big time college football programs or other job opportunities in the NFL. I miss talking about this, but it's pretty big that Levi Jones, another USC player at linebacker, a sophomore, he was let go and taken off the team because he violated a team rule or he had a rules violation. So he's off the squad now. And it's just another player that uh, under this helm of other coordinators that help you recruit are just ended up not being on the team anymore and we get nothing in return because it's college. It's not like professional sports where you can whether it's get compensation back with money or picks when you could trade these guys, but that's not how college works. And that's why a lot of these players, USC's losing is pretty bad in my opinion. But once again, I think that's more of the coordinators around Coach Clay Helen and not Coach himself, but we'll see how that goes. Definitely very unnerving to see that going on. But other like basketball USC news, they, they are right now as it stands the number one recruiting class for next year coming in with the three to four guys that they got it's great for them it's going to be tough to keep it because a lot of these other you know very popular kids have not committed yet for next year and we'll just see where they land I'm pretty sure they'll go to other schools other than usc right now because who knows how many scholarships they'll have available but good for them to see that they're at least on the right path and hopefully not going to be involved in that fbi probe that's still happening then also the Ducks got a win against Nashville, which is cool, but then they do lose their top defensive player, Cam Fowler, because he took a puck to the face and had to have surgery. So right now he's out indefinitely. They don't know how long, but it's tough, tough break. He's one of the better players and uh, 
hopefully it will come back and be able to help them in a later season. But right now, it doesn't look all that well for the Anaheim Ducks. So thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. And have a great rest of your day.